Hi everyone. This short video is about how to write a research proposal, which is also called sometimes synopsis. And this guide is equally good for writing report or an assignment. So let's start. So let's discuss what are the contents of a research proposal. So a research proposal or a synopsis consists of mainly five chapters, whether you are doing BS, Masters or even PhD. So the first chapter is about introduction and then we have literature review, methodology, preliminary results and the last chapter is about summary. Let's discuss the contents of the each chapter and how to write the individual chapters effectively and quickly. So in order to clear some ideas, we have supposed a title. This is just a hypothetical title just to clear some ideas. The title is Structural and Electronic Properties of Two-Dimensional Graphene Using Density Functional Theory. The chapter number one, which is introduction, will be the introduction of the whole research proposal. So how to write chapter number one? Writing a chapter number one is very critical. So one should start with a preface. And the preface is usually of a book, but it can be for the it can be for the research proposal as well. So it should be around one page and should discuss main field under which you are writing your thesis, research proposal or synopsis should discuss aims, scope, etc. So in order to write chapter number one quickly, one should know essential headings and topic specific headings. So you should keep in mind essential headings in your mind and you should write about them. So what are the essential headings? The first essential heading is research background. And it is mostly consist of important works that can be theoretical or experimental, carried by the other researchers on the same or similar topics. The second essential heading is problem statement, which is actually a short and clear writing on issues that need to be researched. Problem statement is about the problem of your work, on which problem you are working. The other essential headings are research objectives. You should mention objectives and aims of your uh, research work or proposal. Then we have scope of the research, which will actually uh, define the boundary of the research. For example, this thesis has, uh, this research proposal is about structural and electronic properties. So optical properties are not the domain of this research proposal. So the scope of this research is only about research and uh, structural and electronic properties. So this is the scope of the research. And then significance of the research. One should write about the importance of the research, why you are carrying this research or why are you uh, working on this topic. It must have some significance or importance. In essential headings, you can also draw this kind of flowchart for your research proposal or synopsis. So you can put your title and then you can write something about chapter number one, chapter number two. So this is just a general, you need to modify it according to your topic. Chapter four, chapter six, and chapter number six is about conclusion or summary. summary. And then there are topic specific headings. For example, this 
research proposal or synopsis is about two dimensional graphene so there are other materials also so you can classify the materials based on dimension you can choose this heading so this is topic specific heading you can write about zero dimensional one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional materials and your topic is uh, your material which is graphene is about uh, will come under two dimensional material which about which you can write in detail so you can also write about different dimensional materials so this uh, another topic specific heading is about structural and electronic properties they are actually physical properties of materials and physical properties can be magnetic optical etc so in short topic specific headings can be retrieved from the title of your uh, synopsis or research proposal so another topic specific heading comes from the methodology used so you can see in the above topic uh, title that the one need to calculate structural and electronic properties using density function theory so density function theory is a theoretical technique but you can also write about some experimental te uh, techniques that are available and then you can uh, write in detail about theoretical techniques so these both subheadings can be under what are the ways to explore physical properties which is a topic specific heading so in short you can uh, make headings which are essential headings and uh, some are topic specific headings now let's discuss about chapter number 2 which is the literature review what is literature review literature review is about reviewing articles relating to your study or topic so first of all the step 1 is uh, in order to write literature review step 1 which is about finding articles finding articles on what you need to find articles on graphene which is the material in this post title and you can see that uh, one need to calculate structural and electronic properties density function theory so there are different keywords in the uh, post title so one should involve all of these key keywords in the title such as structural properties electronic properties density function theory and you can also write about experimental studies even if your title is not about experimental work you can still write literature review so this is how you can do literature review step 2 is writing literature review in sections one should make headings literature review is should not be in like a long uh, paragraphs or it should be divided into sections and you can make uh, different section sections and you can make different headings how to write literature review in each section so in each section one should use chronological literature review so one should start from the latest papers and then go beyond the recent papers secondly one paper one paragraph approach so you can read one paper and you can summarize this paper uh you can uh, write about the main ideas of the article in your own word by reading abstract methodology used novelty of the work results conclusion so you can put different papers just by uh, putting one paragraph on the behalf of one paper this is an effective approach one paper one paragraph approach how to write literature view in each section we can we should involve tables flow charts 
figures, etc. So literature review is not about writing text only. One should put that information uh, in, in present that information uh, in terms of table. So you can see the examples table 2.2 and table 2.3. So one can, for example, this table 2.3 important studies on structural properties of the compound by other authors. So you can see that uh, instead of writing, one can make a table consisting of author, year, material, and study. So this can effectively increase the number of pages uh, in your uh, research uh, proposal or synopsis. So another question, where to find articles in chronological order? So one can simply go to Google Scholar and you can see on the right hand panel, uh, one can select uh, a year, for example, uh, year 2020, 2019. So if you select year 2020, only you will see only those papers which uh, appear, which are published in year 2020. One can also use Web of Science. This is another approach. We will talk about this uh, in another video. Web of Science uh, is sometimes uh, not available in university. It requires some access. So this is an example of literature view uh, from an actual uh, synopsis, actual do document. So you can see that there are uh, some uh, topic specific heading headings. So you can see that structure properties, electronic properties, and you can see that literature view is divided into sections. Just to give you some idea, this is an actual example from a document. Third chapter is about methodology. For example, for this post title, uh, one need to calculate structural and electronic properties using density functional theory. So methodology will be around density functional theory. One need to uh, uh, explain each aspect of the methodology used in achieving the aims of the study. So this is about the methodology use. Chapter number four is about preliminary results. And if you see this post title, uh, title the preliminary results should be uh, for structural and electronic properties. So uh, if you have started your studies, you may not have preliminary results. So even if you don't have preliminary results, you should write about your preparations even if you don't have the results. For example, you can write about installation of softwares, experimental equipments, etc. You can write something about trainings that you are acquiring in order to achieve your goals or uh, your learning about different methods. So this is about preliminary result. Chapter number five is the summary. You need to summarize the uh, from top to bottom of your research proposal or synopsis. A summary must cover uh, and it should start uh, with an introductory sentence about your study or title. You can start by this and then uh, you can write uh, something about in a very uh, short way something about on what problem you are working, background of the problem with key findings from the literature view, purpose of the study, objective of the study, significance of the study, scope of the study, methodology used, prelim preliminary results or findings. So you can write something uh, in a very short or two, three sentences uh, about each heading and it will uh, make a very good summary. So one or uh, uh, around two pages, the sum, uh, a good summary consists of one or two pages. That, that's more than enough. And lastly, don't forget to put uh, references. So whatever you write, you should 
put references you should give references and at the end a reference list should be there for your synopsis or research proposal let's see an actual example of a proposal so you can see this is an actual example with of a pad proposal and you can see that there are uh, the headings that we have already discussed such as background of problem problem statement purpose of study they all are included under chapter number 1 which is introduction then we have chapter 2 which is literature review chapter 3 search methodology chapter number 4 preliminary results you can talk about plan of the study and future works chapter number 4 5 is about summary and lastly you should mention references that's all thank you for having me